Well, I'm out on a little local ride here, but I am using what I consider, what Michelle and I both consider, our number one e-biking accessory. So stick around, let's talk about that just a little bit. Well, hello again, Internet. Welcome back to the channel. Yeah, I'm out on just a little local ride, and so I could certainly get by without my number one accessory. Hey, hit the pause and think about it for a minute. What's your number one accessory for e-biking? You know, you got lights. Uh, you got, you know, Bluetooth speakers, phone holders, seats, seat posts. Uh, you know, you got all these accessories. Well, think about what yours is, but I'm going to tell you what ours is, and it's going to be not the phone holder, but the app, and specifically a navigation app. This one happens to be the Komoot app, and uh, you guys that have been with the channel a long time, you know there was a real soap opera with that, uh, but we've had a lot of new subscribers, so I thought maybe I would... Maybe some of you guys, this would be something that you could really use. And so I thought, yeah, we're going to go ahead and, and talk about that a little bit. Uh, I'll give you just a real brief history, you know, when I say a soap opera and now, well, what's you talking about? What's you talking about? Uh, I had a lot of problems with this Komoot specifically app, and I really liked it. And uh, uh, <laughs> it, was like, it was like a marriage going bad. Sorry about, sorry about covering the camera there, guys. I had an itch right there I had to take care of. But you know what? We don't do a lot of editing around here, so you get, you get the authentic uh, ride along. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it would work, and then it would cancel out the navigation. It was just, it, was, it could be a real pain sometimes. It could be a real pain sometimes. And so I finally even just dumped it unloaded it said i'm just gonna go ride with gps that is another good app by the way the ride with gps and i still use that for now uh we'll go over some of the differences between them and why i say for now but anyway i, I emailed back and forth to germany is where the Komoot app is made and we worked quite a bit and it appears like they have uh, wow that pedal assist is way up there that's not supposed to be up there like that uh, it appears like they have gotten their app fixed. What it was doing was anytime you would take a picture with it, well, the navigation would end on you and you'd have to reopen it back up, restart it, reopen it back up. You've lost part of your route. Uh, it was just a pain in the butt. And boy, would I get mad at it because we'd be out there sometimes we didn't even know where we was at. Boom, there it went, it went out. So, uh, but like I say, it appears like they got that fixed. I don't take a lot of pictures, and so I'm not gonna worry so much about the pictures, but what I liked about taking pictures with my phone while that app was running is because I was able to geotag where those pictures were, and then you could put it on your route planner, and you could use that geotagged area to bookmark something, if that's a place you wanted to come back to or if that's a place you wanted to remember. And so that's what we liked about that. But what else is there about it? Uh, you know, I'm local right now and I'm still using it. Why? I know exactly where I'm at. Heck, I, I rode a lot of horses down here before there was even pavement on this road. Uh, we did, uh, did a lot of the training on these old gravel roads, you know, with uh, folks that would bring their horse in and I'd take them out riding and, you know, I know where all these places are around here, but what I happen to be using it for right now is I'm just recording and seeing how long this route is and then I'll turn it into a route. As you know or don't know, uh, I've been trying to use my e-biking to lose some weight and so for these rides that I do at home, 
I'd like to know exactly how far that route is going to go. And so, because I'm doing them through the week when my shop is open and depending on how busy I am, I might want to only go an eight mile ride or I might want to go a 15 or 18 mile ride, depending on, you know, how busy things are, how hectic things are. And so I could just record these rides, find out exactly how long it is. This is probably going to be about 11 or 12 miles, something like that. Uh, uh, where have we been? We've been about six miles, so I'm going to say it's going to be maybe 10 and a half, 11 miles, something like that. Uh, but we would know exactly how long each route is. And so, you know, that, that's one way of using it. Uh, when we go out on these road trips that we do, and we're trying to do more and more and more road trips, uh, they're just invaluable on them because we have no idea uh, I believe he's going to take that bucket and open and pick that wire up and ride under it I should just turn around and go back there but I don't know maybe he's not and I do have to get back into work <laughs> at some point <laughs> you know we got to work around here sometimes um, but you know we have no idea where we're going and what we could do is we could say well okay we're going to this trail the Greenbrier River Trail ride the Greenbrier River Trail what we could not do is ride any other uh, areas that are not famous trails because we wouldn't know how to find them you know and so it turns out good for that, for what I call semi-local rides. When we load up the bikes onto the car, we'll take them into Raleigh. Raleigh is just a phenomenal place to ride. There are, I'm sure over 200 miles of bikeways there. There's no way we would be able to find all of them, even with Google Maps, because you have to go behind somebody's house and you can find a greenway, and that's the, right away into it. <laughs> no way we would find all of these things. Or you might be riding out a trail and there'll be four trails coming off of it in 15 yards. Which one do you take? You know, but if you have a navigation app, you know exactly where to go. So they're really good for that kind of thing right there. We can make loops, like when we went down to Charlotte, we made several loops, even though we were using the uh, uh, the greenways, we might go from one greenway to another greenway and really make a nice loop because a lot of these places might have a six mile long trail. And then a little further over in town, they have a four mile long trail and then a different trail somewhere else. You know, and you got to connect them trails together. Well, the Kaboot will show you the bike safe lanes as well. So, all right, what we're going to do we're going to jump in and I'm going to show you on the computer screen some of these things that the Kamut is able to kind of do. Uh, I'll show you the way that we use it. I'll show you the way it was designed to be used, which is not exactly how we use it. Uh, uh, but I'll let you know what that is and some different things that you can do with it. Now, most of these things, they will transfer to another navigation app. Uh, I had mentioned a little bit earlier, well, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about, well, the reason I have chosen a Kamut is because I'm a cheapskate. And the Kamut was $30 for a one-time fee for their world package. You can do navigation anywhere in the world. And the Ride with GPS is a subscription of, for me, it's $50 a year. For anybody else, it's, it's 60 a year, unless you've been grandfathered in. I, I was grandfathered in. I'm not sure if I'm going to spend $50. Uh, they've got me on a premium plan right now just to try it out. I would, I would say I believe the basic subscription is worth it to me. I don't know that the premium plan is worth it for what I am doing. I might change that. You know, we're putting together a cycling group, or trying to anyway, for this year. And it is going to be based off of, and we are going to use some motor here. You know, I talk about trying not to use this motor. I'm going to use some motor here because this is kind of a, 
a busier road here. Uh, but uh, yeah, we don't need it. That's ah, pretty good right there. I'll let this car come by so I can keep an eye on him. Uh, but it, the premium may be worth it at that point, and so I may go back to the premium if we're trying to put together this e-biking group, an e-biking group. And so, yeah, uh, let's, what time is it? It's two o'clock in the afternoon. I wonder, I'm not seeing anything new being done there, so I'm just gonna ride on by. I'd like to see what the base mileage is on this route anyway. Uh, But yeah, that's that's in some videos yet to come where, where we're trying to put together a, a, an e-biking group. And it's going to be basically knitted together with the routes that we take. And the routes are going to be published on these navigation apps. So, all right, so we're going to shoot back into the house there where it's a lot warmer than it is out here. And we'll take a, look, a little bit more specifics on the Komoot app, but again, remember, these things will transfer over to a lot of navigation apps. You might have a little different path to get there, but for the most part, it's, it's pretty similar. So, let's jump back in there. Okay, guys, welcome in where it's nice and warm. What we've done is we've opened up our, uh, our homepage for the Komoot app. That's what we're gonna use in this example right here. I will probably show you on some of these things even the free apps, how you can go ahead and do your route planning on this. But we're going to go ahead and open up the route planner, and I'm going to show you right off the bat why it is that we really like the Komoot app. And it's going to be all these little red marks that you see around here. What these red marks are is they are user-generated highlights that people have put in here. And this is not highlights that only myself has provided. These are highlights that all different users provide here. And if we take a look at them, this is the American Tobacco Trail. And uh, you know you can get a little bit of information that way on, this is White Oak Creek, uh, Jordan Lake and New Hope Game Preserve. And these are really valuable for going from one place to another. Now, the reason that I had talked about taking pictures um, on this app and what I was using that for is I have created some of these highlights and they just geotag in and we will take this one right here for example hey do them handlebars and gloves look familiar and that's the bridge on the Raleigh Greenway we've actually highlighted that well we've done more than highlight it we have actually bookmarked it I'll get into that in just a second but that way I know this basically red flags it when we come through this route that, hey, that's a bridge that, uh, Michelle's not real crazy about these bridges all the time, as you guys know. And if you don't know why, you should be subscribed. Ha <laughs> ha, smooth that in there again. Uh, you know, when if I if I develop a route and it has that on here, I'm going to say, Michelle, look, you know, we're, we're crossing that really hectic bridge right there. Are you up for that? And she might say, yeah, I'll, let's go for it. Or she might say, nah, you know what? I'm just not feeling it this week. Let's take a different route, different way around there. And so we don't run into any surprises like that. You know, when we go out on these road trips, that's great to not be running into surprises. One other thing that we can do here on this particular app, which is why I really like the Komoot, is we can bookmark different places here. So you'll see different, uh, all these blue tags in here, these are places that I have actually bookmarked spots. And let's see what we've got here. Like right here, this is old Reedy Creek parking that I've bookmarked right here. And, you know, we pull that up and we say, you know what, we've parked there. It's a good, safe place to park. So yeah, let's do that again. And that's right here on our route planner. Now, I'm going to just give you a real quick overview of how this actually operates. If you look at all these green lines, these are all cycleways down through here. That's a segment right there. 
but they're all cycleways if they're a green line that is not on a road. If it is a green line on a road, what that is is a cycling safe road. As you can see, there is a bike lane on this road right here. So the green lines in the middle of the road mean that it's a cycle safe road. On the edges, it is a uh, street side trail. Now this is going to work very similar to Google Maps as far as we're just going to go ahead and start up here at that highlight and we're going to just go ahead and set <coughs> we're going to set the Walnut Creek Trail as our destination. That's going to give us the safest, the shortest, safest cycling, the shortest cycling safe way of going there. So these roads are going to be cycle safe uh, and or trails. And that's the way this app was originally designed <coughs> to operate. And, and it was basically the, the, the way to get from A to B. Well, nowadays, we're out there cycling for more recreation. So <coughs> we would like to maybe try and keep to more greenways. And we've got greenways right down here. Even some of them are street side. So what we're going to do is we're just going to grab this. We're going to pull it over this way. And do we have any other greenways here? I'm seeing a greenway right here down through Lake. Aha! I'm seeing a greenway right here. So we're going to take this and we're going to drag it down into here. We might want to go ahead and, and continue on greenways. Now what we've just done is, I believe that was like a four mile trail. Now we made it a six and a half mile trail and it's almost all greenways coming down through here. There's a few sections of road, but the sections of road that we do have are cycling safe. And so that's just going to give you, like I said, a quick overview. This is not exactly how we go about building all of our routes that we have, but it's similar and it's enough to give you a real quick overview of how we go about doing that. I'll show you one other little trick here. You could go from one way and you could just make that a round trip and that would take you right back to your original destination. So we'll go with the one way for right now and that'll take that out. But yeah, that's going to be just a, a quick overview. So this is the reason right there that Honestly, just like the American Express, we don't leave home without these apps, especially when we're headed out on these road trips. Uh, I got to tell you, they have made it so much more enjoyable to do this when we know what we're coming across, we know what we're going to be getting into, and it just makes, like I said, when we're out biking, it just adds so much that this is our number one accessory that we use. And uh, so, yeah. Yeah, we're going to end up doing a few more on these navigations, and I'll show you how it is. I go about keeping all these routes, keeping track of all these routes, if you guys are interested in that. I can tell you this is around Raleigh, but we've found this in every city that we've went to, whether it's Richmond, Charlotte, up in Virginia, down in uh, South Carolina. We find the same thing everywhere. So I'm willing to bet there's some areas right around you that... Really, you could use an app like this for. So, but hey, if you like this, go ahead, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up on that. So, until the next one, Internet, hey, this Southern e-bike and telling you, stay safe, God bless, keep from getting lost, and keep the wheels rolling. Once again, we're out. <laughs>